Well, hello, and thank you so much for joining me. My name is Tiffany Rashawn. I am the head Imaginarian of Imagerate, and this is Imagerating Today. I do appreciate you being here. I hope you can hear me. If you can't, I do apologize. Maybe turn the volume up, put some headphones in. I am at one of my absolute favorite places, the Young Neighborhood Library here in the heart of Houston, Texas, where we just had the Super Bowl. Things are clearing up and making way, so I'm proud of that. I'm whispering, of course, out of respect for the other library patrons. This is the children's section, and it is bright and colorful and mosaic, as you can see in the backdrop. I just thought it would be the perfect place. I didn't think about the, the, the hearing implication, but that's okay. Stay with me. Uh, for those of you who have been waiting anxiously for this series, thank you so, so much for your support. I really, truly appreciate it. Uh, we have been tirelessly plugging along to get this out to you, and it was just a matter of doing it not so much as waiting anymore, so thank you. For those of you who are new and have no idea what this is, stick around. Maybe you'll like it. If you do, drop me a comment. If you don't, okay, drop me a comment anyway. And so let's get right into it because again, I want to be respectful to the other library patrons. Uh, we want to go ahead and give you a brief overview of what we're doing with Read in the month of February. And so February, the shortest month of the year, the same month that so many other things happened. Like I said, the Super Bowl just recently passed. The city was just crazy, crazy, crazy busy. That's passed, and we're moving toward Valentine's Day, right? Valentine's Day is also the same as International Book Giving Day, and if you haven't already configured your list for all of the little imagination, imagination, imagination makers in your life, then you can just scoot on over to imagery.com and take a look at some of our suggestions. But it's, again, also International Book Giving Day, so by all means, buy and gift a child a book or two or three. Uh, and, of course, it is Black History Month. And so in the past years, I have vacillated on covering Black History Month. Um, I just felt some kind of way about it, uh, being a black woman, of course, and being an author and a storyteller. It just... I needed to, for it to feel a little bit more authentic to, to me. So I thought, what could I cover? What could I do to help with that authenticity? Well, as a storyteller and as an author and a writer and an educator, of course, I have a duty to make sure that the stories that we're sharing are truthful, okay? And uh, in doing that, I chose to actually celebrate the children in history for the month of February uh, for Imagery. And so that feature basically overviews all of the children that were children before they were leaders, all right? The children that were children before they were leaders, okay? Typically in black history, we cover, we cover Martin Luther King, we cover Malcolm X, we cover Harriet Tubman, we, we cover all of these legends and we talk about their lives and time, but we really need to buckle down on what their childhood was like so that our children can get a sense of relativity. At Imagery, one of the things that we always do is breathe life into our children's imaginations as in the classroom and beyond. We use the CPR method. C is for context. Is this believable? How can I configure this with this and make something magic? Is it practical? That's the P. Does this make any sense to me? Do these pieces add up? In everyday life, what is the grand scheme? And of course, the R is relativity. Our children, our children deserve to see and own relative imagery, things that appeal to them and what their own lives families and communities are dealing with, portraying um, in and around. So the CPR method actually brings life into the imagination of a child. And again, that's why the company is called Imagery. So with no further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into today's feature. We're kicking it off, kicking it off, kicking it off with drum roll, please. Milo's Museum. Okay, so I, I left the sticky note on here because I want people to know that Zeta actually, I do actually know Zeta Elliot. 
Um, before I actually get to the book, let me say a few words about Zeta. If you don't know who Zeta Elliott is, then right now you need to Google, okay, Zeta Elliott, Z-E-T-T-A-E-L-L-I-O-T-T. I could say a whole lot about Zeta, but I'll let you configure your own opinion. She is a phenomenon, a powerhouse. Um, I have so many favorites that have been written by Zeta, who is an in education, she's an activist, she's a scholar, she's a writer, she's a storyteller, she's amazing, she's amazing. And um, when I got this, I actually got a digital copy, she sends me a digital copy first, typically. And then I got the actual physical copy right in time for the holiday, this just past holiday, and I, I, I couldn't help it, I had to feature it first, I absolutely had to. And so it's so relative, remember the CPR method, Ooh, the CPR method, it's context. This is where our children are right now today. They're looking for new ways to identify with their history. It's practical. Take a look at that setting. Wonder where they are. And it's relative. Our children need to see. Well, I won't spoil it. So let's go ahead and get into it. What we're going to do is I am going to read you the first two pages. I won't give it all away. My hope is that this becomes one of your favorites for your own home library or that you demand it at your local library. All right. And so let's go. Milo woke up feeling excited. Today her class was going to the museum. Mommy and Daddy had to work. But Papa went along as a chaperone. When they reached the museum, Milo's teacher told the class that their tour guide would be called a docent. A docent is a person who teaches us about what's inside a museum, Mrs. Lou explained. The docent was a white-haired woman named Anne. She led the children from room to room, stopping to tell them interesting things about certain sculptures and paintings. Once the tour was over, Mrs. Lou gave the children some time to explore the museum on their own. Milo held her grandfather's hand as they wandered through the rooms together. She stopped in front of a giant mirror and looked at her reflection. Milo could see her classmates admiring the works of art. She liked most of the art too, but something didn't feel right. That's all you get. You absolutely have to get this read. This is something that is priceless beyond measure. As usual, as part of our kick off and, and every time that you're here with me in Imagine Reading today, I've already put together a beautiful supplement for you. In addition, in addition, in addition, Miss Miss Zeta Elliott has also put together something for you. But again, you have to actually get the book or demand it and or demand it at your local library so that you can enjoy it with your children. It is in fact our first feature, children our first feature in children in history and again it is milo's museum written by zeta elliott and illustrated by purple wong this read of course uh, all the information about the read itself is in the supplement there are links to purchase this book of course in the comments in the bio if you guys have any questions or concerns or you have a struggling reader if you will and you need a little bit more that's personal by all means you are welcome to email me at tiffany at and uh that's it we're gonna wrap it up we don't want these to be too long but uh stay tuned we have some really really exciting books coming up um if you go ahead and subscribe You'll be in the know, you'll be in the Imagine Reading Know first and foremost. And again, thank you so, 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 so much for tuning in. My name is Tiffany Rashawn. I'm the head Imaginarian of Imagine Read, and this has been Imagine Reading Today. Have an imaginative day.